Good morning, everyone. I pray for you today that you know that whatever you have happening in your life today, that the Father is always in the process of molding us and shaping us to be a vessel of his own incredible design. We've been talking about songs that give testimonies that sometimes mirror our own testimonies. And so a, a song I want to just use for a quick second is called The Potter. The, the words go this way. The potter was sitting in his shop and he had made a vessel to feed him, to pour, for, to pour water out of. But then it was broken. And then he went and tried to put it back together again. And often that is the way our lives are. Well, there's several reasons for using this idea of potter. And this, we've done several songs that way. It is, this comes out of Isaiah 29, 16. It says this one. Shall the potter be considered equal to the clay? That what is made should not say to its maker, you did not make me or form me or what is formed say to him, you have no understanding. Instead, the word of God says this, that we are nothing but clay in the potter's hands. And God is the potter. Jeremiah helps us there. He says, behold, like clay in the potter's hand, so are you in mine. And the idea there is that we don't argue with God, but that we accept the fact that he is speaking in and through our lives. And so he speaks there and touches there that we know and follow him. Again, Isaiah 64, 8. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay. You are potter. And all of us are the works of your hand. Now, what's going on there in those verses? It's simply this, that God is indeed the potter. He is the master potter. And our task is to trust the potter. And today, I just want to give you a few reasons to trust the potter. Because everything in our lives God is orchestrating his plan for us, that he is able to use us as vessels of honor, vessels that glorify him. I know some of you say, you don't know my life. Ah, I don't need to know your life. The Father does. And he has orchestrated things in your life so that as you are healed and wounded, as you are, are reborn, as the Father speaks into your life, he then does things in your life that help you become a vessel of design. What I see often in people's lives is the glory that God has placed there. And often we don't realize it, that we bless people by showing up. We bless people by the words we use. So here's a couple reasons to trust the Father. The second one is that the Father is able to knead the clay just enough to make it pliable and remove the impurity. So you take clay, you just don't take it and start, you need it to get the air out, to get the impurities out. You need it, you work the clay. The Father knows how to do that in our lives so that we begin to yield to him. Because the key attribute of clay is that it yields to the potter. Now, what's that idea of needing? Oh, that's, some of us would think that's temptation. Some of those think that is trials that go on in our lives. Yes, they are. Because the Father is needing us and stretching us and pulling us, working to get the air and the impurities out. Here's how Paul would put it in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation that has overtaken you, but is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But the temptation will provide a way of escape so that you may be able to endure it. That's the Father needing you, letting you, letting you go of the things you'll need, the, the temptations, the sins, those things that are there that keep you from trusting the Father. The next thing is this one. You take clay, you wet it, you've kneaded it, and then you put it on the wheel, and then you spin the wheel. And the potter knows just how fast to spin the wheel so that we don't go flying off, so that we don't end up being a flat pancake. He spins the wheel at just the right speed in each of our lives so that he can then mold us, shape us. He knows just how much pressure to put on us. Again, temptations and, and tests and trials. Temptations don't come from God. 
tri trials? Hey, I'm being tried here. Okay, fine. Understand that the Father is shaping you and molding you, that you get rid of the things that you don't need. So he firmly and gently molds and shapes you that we become the vessel that he desires us to be. Because remember, everything about us glorifies the Father. The next thing is that as he, he spins the wheel, as he shapes and, and keeps us wet, so that we're moldable and goes inside and pushes the, the sides out to, to shape us the way he wants. Sometimes he puts, begins to put designs in. And designs sometimes like, oh, this hurts. This is a pain. As Paul would say, this thorn in my side. But what God does is he's putting those designs in us that we glorify him. And he knows just how deep to make the design so that it doesn't pierce all the way through. But it's just a design that people can see and know that we belong to him. He puts the right then. He understands how to work in our lives to bring out the potentials that he has put there. That's why the shaping and the molding process is a continual piece. And then too, the engraving, the styling, the putting the lines in us, the flutes, if you will, the, the ways and designs in our lives. Those would be our personalities. Those would be the way we do things. And then next he would take some glaze and paint us just a little bit. Not a lot because we still have yet to be fired. Just a little bit to, to, to hold the design in place. And then he sets us there to dry. The water goes out. And then when we're ready, he puts us in the kiln. And he knows just how hot to make the kiln so that we're not scorched, so that, that we're not overcome, but that we are fired because the fire, again, hardens us and shapes us, that we hold the shape. And often that, is, that comes through our trials and our issues in our lives, the things that we overcome, that we become stronger. Because remember, wet clay is just going to fall over, get wet again, it just droops. No, the shape, the drying, the firing helps us to then hold that shape. Because the Father is always shaping us and molding us. And sometimes, like in the songs, we're broken. And we need healing. So what does he do? He takes us back and remolds us and makes us, breaks us down again, and builds us back up. So that our clay then is stronger. Because remember, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we are. <laughs> we're just dust. We're just clay. But the Father molds us and shapes us. And so he puts us in the kiln. And then understand that the potter is always working to bring out the very best that he has placed in us. That's why you and me and all the people that we see God working in their lives are vessels of incredible design. Because the Father has made us that way. That we glorify him. And the whole key as we are but dust, as we are but clay, is to trust the potter. No matter what's going on in your life this week, this day, trust the potter. Because he's the one spinning the wheel. He's the one kneading and molding and shaping the clay. He is the one putting in each one of us an etching of incredible design that we all glorify and magnify him because all of us are but clay in the potter's hand. Lord Jesus, we thank you again for your word. The Lord, we're but clay, but Father, we trust you. So Father, help us in our lives today to trust you because you indeed are the potter and we're just clay in your hands. Forgive us all those times when we as clay have asked you what you're doing. Help us to just rest and trust you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Be blessed today, dear friends.